he said once you hit 35, your fertility declines tremendously and that you are considered advanced in years. You should do IVF right away. Of course, it was really desperate when I lost the baby and went back to the doctor. The doctor just said, oh, for your age, I would recommend you just go for IVF. I tried to conceive for six years. Almost seven, I guess, six years. So basically, um, my eggs were no good, and uh, I should start thinking about either egg donation or adoption. I went that morning to the clinic for my pregnancy test, and it was early in the morning, and I, ca I went into the waiting room, and there were, it was full, there was nowhere to sit. There were 42 women in the waiting room. Some of them had gone, had gone through it already, and this was their second or third IVF cycle. And just seeing their faces, they looked just worn out. My whole entire life I thought, well, maybe I might not get married, but there was no doubt that I would have my own child, mm -hmm. that, that I would have a child. I mean, it was never a doubt in my mind. And it was like my world came crashing down. And the phone rang and I knew it was them and I knew they didn't have good news. And so I made Craig answer the phone. And I just, I was standing over by the window and I could tell in his voice, you know, they said, we're sorry, it didn't work. It was so difficult. Because I never even considered the possibility of not having a child. I just have never felt so defeated and you know I thought I didn't want to do it to begin with and now they're telling me you know and all and the money too you know I hate to sound superficial but it's a lot of money I mean and you know you work hard for your money and I think about all the things we love to travel and you know you do you think about those things that you know you could have or what about adoption we could have put that money towards adopting a baby and now it's just gone it's just gone months from the moment that I connected with the visionary in me. That's really, that's really the accurate thing to say. It took me eight months and I remember the moment of connection. And for you, I hope that that moment of connection happens over and over and over again in this workshop that it has happened and then it happens as you continue doing this work. If you take care of this instrument, it is going to tell you which way to go to get everything that you desire in life. I think of imagery as a, as a very much a spiritual tool, as a soul tool, because, it, because this particular imagery is very brief. It's like a telegram, you know? It's not just a letter. It's, a, it's like, okay, this got to go directly, you know, to your attention. Grief and joy. Grief and joy. Hot and cold. Hot and cold. Everything flows from the same stream of gold. Everything flows from the same stream of gold. <laughs> I no, 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 it's not that. There's just something about it. It's so, it's, it's great. You have so much wonderful life moving through, so that's good. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Well, I did almost, I think, almost all the tools uh, for a while on a daily basis. And um, one of my favorite ones was we're supposed to get up against a wall, reach up really, really top, high, and... Um, and imagine something that you felt was kind of possible, but in some ways unattainable. So I always saw myself with a baby carrier and holding a, a child in between, holding hands in Central Park with my husband and a child in between us. And I would reach, 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 and then I would let go. And then I would run into the bathroom and be like, I'm a mom. I'd look in the mirror, I'm a mom, I'm a mom. And then once in a while, like I'll see myself in that Thing where we'll be walking in Central Park and there's my game my between us and here I am pregnant and it's heady. Remember that guy that you saw when you were 18 and you fell in love with him, it was cute 
and you walked into the room and you just and your face got all flushed and you had no control over it right mm -hmm. and now when somebody tells you your your hormone levels are and your eggs are and this is you feel that all of that information how it flows through you and what happens to you physically I at that time I just talk to myself like Julia say and I also call into Julia's uh, uh, weekly uh, phone call and I just concentrate on doing all the tools at that time I just told myself okay it's not if I'm not going to get pregnant I'm gonna get my house my, myself healthy mentally and physically before Brielle uh, was uh, was conceived I had four miscarriages we did do this imagery work over the phone and um, we were talking about when when I was when I was a child and how everyone including my parents um, both my mother and father and aunts and cousins would always say to me how beautiful you have such a beautiful face if you would just lose weight you'd be beautiful and because I never really lost the weight that I was never beautiful and you said how how I had to had to be healed with that that I, I needed to, to feel that I could be loved in order to, for me to get to my baby. After the workshop, I began doing imagery every day, but there was one um, exercise involving a gazebo, and I envisioned in the gazebo my mother, my father, my mother's mother, and her, her, her my mother's parents, my father's parents. I, through this exercise, I basically was able to actually feel some sympathy for my mother because her mother had not treated her well and her father, there's rumors, he died very young and there's rumors that he may have committed suicide and, and then I realized it's just this long, there's like this long cycle and legacy in the family of these things that have happened. And it just, I just felt kind of this relief, like it wasn't me, like my mother wasn't stressed out because of me or anything that I did. She's just a part of this whole cycle and for some reason hasn't broken out of it or wasn't aware of it. And so it was, yeah, it was through that and that, and that was very healing and very cathartic to me. I think my view of the work is far more expansive than just conceiving a baby. You know, it, it's really grown beyond that into how do I not let this, this challenge or this enormous disappointment um, ruin my life, basically. I was so desperate for hope. And that's, that's really what I got out of it. Like, I got hope. When I went to, to the workshop, I mean, I had no idea what I was walking into at all. Basically, I was looking for anything that, uh, that could help us. And we looked everywhere, and I said, all right, you want to go to Woodstock to some workshop? I'll go wherever. I don't care where we have to go. And to me, that was such a great workshop. I knew, you know, certain things you know when you're there and, and when you're leaving that something special happened. And um, I knew that day that we had changed our lives somehow, that this had affected us in a certain way. And... The way, the way we went in and the way we left was like a totally different two people walking in the room.